Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to the webinar. Uh, looks like we've got about another minute. A few people are still coming in, so we're going to wait to make sure that everybody gets here. We are going to be talking about using comments to speed up your report writing, and I'm really excited. Comments are such a huge part of what makes TAP Inspect work. We wanted to uh, put together a uh, a webinar to kind of go over our thinking, how it's set up, some some best practices as well. So hopefully you get some really good information. Uh, we need you to ask questions. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more. Uh, a few more people are coming in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a good webinar. Make sure you uh, ask your questions. We're going to follow up and we're going to have a Q&A at the end. Um, we're going to be talking about using your comments to speed up your report writing. and Templates are a big part of home inspection uh, reports with TAP Inspect, but your comments are really the other big part of it. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more detail. So it's almost time to get started. Uh, a few more people are coming in. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. It looks like it is about that time. So uh, let me get some content loaded up. And we're going to start getting into the, the uh, good part of the webinar. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. If anybody's having a problem, make sure that you uh, chat. Uh, Katie's on the webinar as well. She'll be able to help you. Uh, don't worry. We're going to be recording the webinar, and we'll send out a link afterwards. So don't worry if you're going to miss anything. And uh, if you have questions, make sure that you do um, ask them so we can uh, follow up with you. So we're gonna talk about using your comments to uh, speed up your report writing. And we're gonna cover uh, quite a bit tonight, but uh, we're gonna talk about how templates and comments fit into our overall design approach at TAP Inspect. I wanna talk about what we were thinking and kind of how we have designed TAP Inspect to help finish reports on site and why comments are the key to having a readable report. Uh, templates and comments go together. You're going to hear me saying that a lot, but comments are really the key to have a readable report. And more importantly, your saved comments or your comment library, they are the key to efficiency. It's once you can start using these comments over and over, you're really going to get quick at writing reports and you're also going to have consistent reports. I want to talk about how to avoid writing bad comments and really what makes it a bad comment. And what makes up a good comment? There's uh, some best practices that we've learned over the years from talking to clients and also home inspectors and looking about what people have problems with and what seems to be working very well. Um, and I'm also going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that we see that make inspectors' saved comments hard to use. There's some things that we've seen people do that has really made it hard to be able to use their comments over and over, and I'm going to try to help you avoid making those same mistakes. And then at the end, hopefully we're going to have time, I'm going to talk about some tips to make your comments work for you and some uh, overall strategies that may come in handy. So I am Michael Worth. I am married. I've got kids everywhere from 22 down to 14. I think I've met or spoken to pretty much everyone on the webinar. If I have not, it's nice to meet you. I have been a home inspector for over 20 years. I've been a home inspector for my uh, entire adult life. I've personally done thousands of home inspections. I've got one tomorrow. So I'm just like you. I am out in the field. I'm using TAP Inspect, dealing with clients and generating reports. I have been an expert witness for both home inspectors and also for home buyers. I've helped both sides of it, and I'm from a family of home inspectors. This has been in my blood for a long, long time. And I'm a co-founder of TAP Inspect, but more importantly, we built TAP Inspect out of our own need. We fundamentally refused to go back to the office after doing two or three home inspections a day and spending another three to six hours writing reports. Once technology changed, we knew that we could do a better job, and that's how TAP Inspect got built. So I want to be honest with everybody. I want to temper enthusiasm, I guess. Um, I'm super excited. I know what we're going to talk about with comments is going to change the way you do your reports. I hope it does. Uh, but I want, to, I, want to, I want to temper your enthusiasm. It is going to take time and also experience to build your own personal comment library. 
And that personal comment library is really the trick to efficiency. Uh, third party comments say they sound great, but they rarely work. And I'll talk about a little bit why they don't work as well as everybody expects them to. But as you use your comments, you are going to change and modify them. It's a continual thing. It's not a one and done type task. Your personal comment library is going to change. My library is nothing like it was last year, two years, five years ago. As I've changed as a home inspector, my comment library has changed with me. And you will get faster and more efficient the more you use your saved comments. You've got to use your saved comments out of your own personal library. That's what's going to give you this efficiency. A lot of people like to dictate them, and I understand it's a lot easier. But if you learn how to use your saved comments, that is how you're going to get more and more efficient. And hopefully I'll be able to explain and kind of show you how that works. We need you to ask questions. We're, we do webinars primarily so we can get some interaction with you, our, our subscribers. And at the top of your screen, there's a little blue uh, uh, speech balloon with a question mark. When you have a question, click on that thing and type it in for us. We will see that list, and if we don't get to your question at the end of the webinar, we will follow up with you through email, or if you need to call us, we'd be happy to do it. But don't hesitate. Don't wait. When you have a question, go ahead, click that little balloon at the top of the screen, and type your question in. We need to get to your feedback, so please do that for us. So the big, big design approach that we have with Tap Inspect, it's, it kind of comes down to this. Your template checklist is what you're gonna see in every home inspection. The template defines what you check in every home inspection or what you check off. The comments describe what is interesting about this home inspection, this particular house. So the checklist is gonna be on every house, but the comments, that's the good stuff. That's what tell the story about this particular home, your comments and maybe a couple of photos. That is what informs your client what is unusual or important or special about the house they are buying. So again, the template checklist is what you record in every home inspection. But the good stuff is going to be in the comments. That is what is interesting about this specific home inspection. And if you've been around as long as I have, you remember the old three-part carbonless forms that were printed out. And the easiest way to think about it is the checklist is what the template is. It's a checklist. And you circle and you check off and you're yes and no. And it's what applies to every single house that you inspect or every single property. But at the bottom of all of these things, there's always a bunch of blank lines for comments. And that's where you put the unusual stuff. That's where you put the stuff that doesn't really fit in a checklist or is so important that you need to call it out, or that's the good stuff. The good stuff is always gonna be in the comments. So that brings us to the idea that a comment with a few photos is easier to read than a checklist. And we want people to read our reports. That's the whole point of us generating them. When you deliver a report that nobody can read or understand, we really haven't given our client any value. So. A comment with a few photos is going to be easier to read and really easier to understand than a checklist. And since we want our clients to read the report, that's what we try to that's what we try to concentrate on letting you do with Tap Inspect. And since modern technology allows us to put photos in our comments, you just can't compare it to what a checklist tries to uh, convey. So here is the cooling section in our detailed home inspection template. And it's a checklist. It's, I think a lot of you have seen it. A lot of you may use it. Uh, you just go down and you check energy source, the type of system, the condition of it. You can record the make. Some people record the model, the serial number, the size. So here's a, a classic checklist. And it's, it's got all the information that you may want to check. And it may be the information that you want to report to your client. But it's hard to read. I mean, this is a, uh, it's a, a spec sheet almost. So compare that to a comment. Now here is a real simple comment showing the AC and the data plate, 
We're telling the client it operates as expected and it's about three years old. Now that's what every client asks me about their air conditioning. Is it work? How old is it? And then usually how long is it gonna last? But I don't like to get into that. If they do wanna know the make, you can see the carrier badge right there. You know it's a carrier. It's got the model number, the serial number. You could even get the max amperage off of this thing. So all the information that's in the checklist, we've also communicated with just a simple comment and a couple of photos. So you kind of have to ask yourself, when you're reading through a report, which one is gonna catch your eye? Which one do you think your client is gonna stop and look at? What we have seen and what we know quite certainly is that they glaze over the checklist. They may jump to the cooling and just kind of glaze over it, but their eye is always drawn to the photos and they will read a sentence or two. They're not gonna read a long paragraph. So that's why comments really make it a readable report. Any large block of text, nobody's gonna read it. They're just gonna skim over it because it's just so much information. When they see a photo, a short piece of text, it draws people's eyes, they will read it. So that's how you can use your comments to create a nice readable report. Big part of what we try to do is to help you realize and to help you use your saved comments because your saved comments are your own personal knowledge base of home inspecting. It's really what it is. It is a library of all the things that you've learned being a home inspector explained in your voice that you can use over and over and over. It's your knowledge base. We talk about it on computers and websites and stuff, but your saved comments in Tap Inspect are your own personal knowledge base of home inspecting. And we give you the tools to be able to use them on reports and maintain them and to be able to find them when you need them. So easier way to think about it is we want to help you say, yes, I've seen that before and this is what you need to do because that's really what we do as home inspectors. After you've done a couple of dozen home inspections, you start to see the same things over and over and over. And, and what I find super interesting is what one home inspector reports on over and over and over is different than what another one does. Some guys are really keyed into plumbing and some guys are on HVAC or structural, but as a home inspector, we gravitate towards those things of, yes, I've seen that before, and this is what you need to do, or this is what you need to know. The key, the key to efficiency is being able to reuse that information over and over. If you've got to manually type it out every single time, you're always going to be slow. So we kind of tier um, the, the type of stuff that we see um, by levels. There's a lot of stuff that we see the same things over and over and over. I guess uh, in electrical, I always comment on the uh, inside of the panel and it's okay and the GFIs may be tripping and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff that we see over and over. And that is the idea behind our saved comments or saved category comments in the comment editor. I'm gonna show it to you as soon as we're finished with this slide to kind of give you an idea. And then some things we only see once or twice a year. We run into them enough, we know they're in our saved comments, but since we don't use them every day, they may not be right in front of us. And then lastly, we may see something once or twice in our career. So in those cases, we could try to find them in our library, but often it might be easier just to type it out. Now, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, switch over here to... Uh, I have uh, my, my iPad up, give me a second here. So here I am in uh, the Demo Dan report. I think most people, when they created Tap Inspect account, we tried to give you the Demo Dan so you have something to work from. But when I'm in a report and I go to add a uh, comment, so let's say I'm in the exterior and we've got some exterior comments right now but we're gonna go into the comment editor. And when I talk about the saved comments, we've got the saved exterior comments button up here, and it lists all the comments that I have saved in the exterior section. And they're ordered by the ones that I use the most often. 
Uh, the ones at the top I've used most often as you scroll down, I use them less and less. So the idea is the comments that you use the most often will always be at the top of the list in the category, in this case, exterior, that you usually save them. So if we go into electric, and I think I always like to record the electrical panel and final electric and final inspection stickers. So that's why they are at the top of the list. And you can see as you go down, I use the lower ones less and less common. So the stuff that I see all the time in my reports, or I want to report on all the time, is at the top of this saved comments list. Now that doesn't really help us when it's something that we run into periodically. And that's what the search bar is for in this comment editor. We can go in there and we can search for pretty much anything. So say I have a bunch of two prong outlets. I can search for those. And just by typing two in the search bar, I can see we've got seven comments that show up. And if I need to find out what it is, I tap on it to kind of show the whole comment instead of just the snippet. This one about the foundation doesn't apply. Um, the one in the kitchen, not really, but this is maybe the one I wanted about many interior outlets. So I can search when I don't run into it all the time. I, I don't see it enough that it shows up at the top of my saved electrical comments list, but if I search for it, I can find it. Um, the last one is when you have to manually type it in, and that is really pretty unusual, and I see stuff like that, and I know you all do too. When it's something so unusual, you're just not going to see it again. So you go ahead and you uh, manually type it in. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel that and switch back to our uh, um, to our slideshow. Now I wanted to talk about this is really a good example of why preloading your comments and also why a third party library doesn't work very well. If you preload them, all of your saved category comments are going to have the same importance. They're going to have the same ranking, so there's going to be no order. Only by adding them to reports and saving them to a report is when the app is going to know that's an important comment to you. So it's going to move up that list for you, and it's going to stay near the top. Uh, you could preload everything and search the entire database of comments, but you need to know what's in the comment, and that's why a third-party one doesn't usually work. If you don't know what's in your library, trying to search the database of comments is really pretty tough because you don't know if it was sheetrock or drywall, or if it's Romex or copper wire. Uh, you don't know the words that were used in it. And you may have the stuff that you might see once or twice in your career, but it's gonna take you so long to be able to find it Again, it's probably going to be easier to type it out. This is fundamentally the idea of why you need to save comments to your library and use your saved comments because these three layers or levels of frequency of using them is going to help you dial in your own personal knowledge base on doing home inspections. And we see between three and 500 comments is about what most people need. Uh, we do see comment libraries in the thousands. And you run into so many duplicates and so many other comments that it's hard to find them. So try to keep this in mind as you're doing your reports and you're saving comments to your library. Is this something you see over and over and over? Is this see something that you're going to see once or twice a year? Or is this maybe something that you're only going to see once or twice in your whole career? So now that we've kind of talked about the levels and how to find comments and how the comment library sort of works, I want to talk about how to make sure that good information is going into your comment library, or more importantly, good information is going into your reports to help you have a readable report. And this dovetails in and really goes with the idea of having a good comment library that's usable to make you more efficient. So a, I'm going to talk about a, uh, every comment should really have three parts. Fundamentally, when you talk about a comment, you need to be able to say what you observed, why it's important, and what to do next. That 
is what educates your client. And that really describes what you were trying to say. And this is a pretty decent comment over here. It's got a couple of photos, short, sweet, but it tells you what was observed, a couple of hairline cracks, uh, why it's important. Well, it's not a structural issue, so that's an important idea. And then what to do next. You can watch it, or if you want, you can repair it by tuck pointing. So a bad comment, what I call a bad comment, is a comment that doesn't include the three required parts, those what was observed, why it's important, and what to do next. And we see it a lot. This is what I saw, and this is what you need to do. If you don't report why it's important, they may not be able to put it in context. Or worse, if you say what was what you saw, why it's important, but you don't tell them what to do, that can be just as bad. So that that's a, that's a bad comment. Um, I also consider it a bad comment when you put a bunch of issues into one single comment. And I see this a lot in uh, bathrooms or really on the exterior. I see a lot of reports where in the exterior, they, uh, the inspector will add one comment and talk about there are brick cracks, there is wood rot, the steps are okay, uh, the railing is rested, and uh, the timber retaining wall looks okay. So you've got all of these issues in one single comment. You're never going to be able to reuse that comment again. Uh, the reader really kind of has to understand every single thing and read the whole comment before they can determine what you're trying to educate them about. But when you have all those issues, the next thing that we almost always see is 10 to 12 photos after it trying to show all of those things. So you've got this three paragraph comment with 10 photos and you can't tell what photo goes with which. Um, a bad comment also has a lot of technical language, a lot of uh, technical jargon that we use talking to each other as home inspectors, but most home buyers just don't understand or it intimidates them. Um, and also I consider a bad comment something so specific that you're never gonna be able to use it again. And I have to admit, I, sometimes I am guilty of it. I'll say the downspout on the left side of the vehicle door on the west side of the house. And that is so specific, I'm never going to be able to use it again. So I may put it in a report to help them understand it, but I certainly don't want to save that comment back to the library. So it's kind of an example of it. Uh, it might be too small, I apologize. I wanted to get the photos in on this one. Here is a comment, and you can tell it's multiple paragraphs. Uh, it talks about several issues, and these are only four photos, but there was six more. And this is talking about the electrical system and the inspector tried to put everything about the electrical system into a single comment. It's unfortunate because this comment will never be able to be used again. It's gonna be incredibly unlikely that all of these observations are gonna exist in the exact same house at the same time. So it's gonna be really hard. The other thing that's unfortunate and what I consider this a bad comment is when a reader is going through the report, they see this big block of text, they may read a couple of sentences and then you lose them. Ideally, each individual thing that you wanna say would be one short, three sentences, two sentences, a photo or two, they can read it and get on to the next thing. Um, when you get into a large comment like this in a lot of ways, it's a bad comment. And it's gonna be hard for a, a reader to understand it. Now, when I talk about a good comment, it's kind of the opposite of that. It's going to include those three parts of a comment, what you see, why it's important, and then also what to do next. Um, it's going to include one or two photos and only address a single issue or an item. Now, that's super important because when you're only talking about one thing, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You may have several comments in an area. Each one could be information or deficiency. You could save it to the library, not save it to the library. And then you can talk about each one individually to help your client wrap their head around the, the property that they're buying. Also, if you're talking about a single thing, the one or two photos relate specifically to that one thing. You get away from that problem of having 10 photos and then not knowing which photo belongs to what sentence in that big, long paragraph. Um, I always tell people to keep it only a few sentences and to make sure an eighth grader can understand it. And it's not that home buyers are stupid, but they certainly don't have the technical 
uh, experience in the technical vocabulary that we use. So our job is to learn those things and explain it to them in a way that they can understand. So a good comment is only going to be a couple of sentences long, sweet to the point, and it's going to be written in a way that anybody can understand it. Um, ideally, a good comment is going to be able to be used again because more than likely, after you've done a couple of hundred home inspections, you're going to see the same things over and over again. And then that good comment will be able to be saved to your library. Or ideally, this good comment is a comment that you keep pulling from your saved comments so you don't even have to write it anymore. So look at, there's a good comment here. Um, and I think everybody's run into this. It's a vanity top and a base. They're loose. They're not attached to each other or the wall. And the big problem is when they're loose like that, the plumbing can get come loose or you can break it. So that's what this comment tells them. Very simple. Top, the bathroom vanity and top are not secured to each other or the wall. Secure is needed to prevent plumbing from coming loose or breaking. So here's a comment. You can save this to your library. You could use it anytime it's loose. And you could search for vanity loose or vanity secure, and you're going to find it. Um, also, as you scan through it, you're going to see a short little text and a photo to show them exactly, oh, that's right, this is in that kid's bathroom. Or uh, they'll be able to identify it for this specific house. So that's a good comment. Um, some of the biggest mistakes that we see in saved comments, and this is after you've done the report. And one of the things that I'll talk about in another webinar, because I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time, or it's, it's really a pretty deep concept, is the ability to save cons comments back and forth. But the biggest mistakes we see in, in inspector save comments is, we save super specific comments into your library. And the problem with that is that you're, if you have a very specific comment, like I talked about the downspout on the left side of the vehicle door on the west side of the house, it's going to be really, really hard to reuse that comment again. It needs to be a lot more generic. Um, so you don't want to save super specific comments into your save comments library. Um, the other thing we run into is saving compound comments when you address multiple things because what we talked about with the uh, electrical comment, that example of a bad comment, the odds of running into that combination of things in that exact same way are very, very small. So by having a compound comment addressing a lot of different things, you're not going to be able to use it again. So those first two are really about not saving specific or compound comments because you're not going to be able to use them again. And that's where the efficiency comes in. The ability to use your saved exterior comments, pick the one you want, add it to the report and move on, or searching for the comment to reuse it. Your saved comments need to be in a format and, in a, and, and worded in a way that you could reuse them over and over and over. And these first two things, um, the, the super specific and the compound, they make that really tough to do. Um, the, the, the last thing that we seem to run into is saving a bunch of very similar comments with just like one change. So you've got a bunch of iterations of something that's almost exactly the same. So let me show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, this is a super specific and a compound comment. It's talking about a bathroom. Uh, it's talking about it's on the second level, a wall mounted sink, a recessed tub with a shower. Um, talks about running everything. This is this has got everything in it. And this is a long narrative comment. The odds of you using it again are slim. You may be able to use it again, but in a lot of ways, this would be better used in a checklist. Um, or you could say something even more generic like the uh, main bathroom fixtures operated as expected, except as otherwise noted. You don't have to list everything because if you used a generic comment like that with a couple of photos, that's going to tell the exact same story, sort of like what we were talking about with the uh, cooling section earlier in the webinar. Um, so this is a very super specific and compound comment. You do not want to save this to your library because you're never going to be able to use it again. And uh, this, is, this is a pretty decent example of a bunch of similar comments. Uh, 
we're all talking about an air handler of a hydro air system, but the only difference is sort of the manufacturer and the age, and there might be a difference in a word or two. So when you run into an air handler for a hydro air heating and cooling system, which one are you going to use? Well, you got three of them. You probably got more than this because uh, every iteration of manufacturer and age is going to change. So you want to stay away from using multiple similar comments. One thing that you could do is save a very generic comment about this uh, and not talk about the manufacturer. And if you wanted, you could just put the age in there on every single one because if you used a, a simple comment with a couple of photos, one of the unit and then one of the data plate, you're going to get all the information that this inspector has been typing in. So you want to avoid using um, multiple similar comments. Um, I did want to show you um, a quick thing on the iPad, and then we're going to get into the summary. So give me just a second. Let me get over here and get back to my uh, my iPad. Um, we did talk about the saved searches or searching for comments. I'm going to kind of go over that again. So we're back in the demo Dan report. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people understand this or knew this, but when you look at the sections, you can see the numbers and that tells you the number of comments that you have in that specific uh, section. And it can get kind of tough to drill down and try to find the comment you want. So we have this view all comments button at the top. And when you tap on that view all comments, it's going to list every single comment with the photos in this report. And that's kind of handy because I use it often to proofread my reports. After I've gone through the inspection and I've added everything in, I will read through these all comments, the view all comments button. And if I see something that uh, needs to be edited, uh, let me find something that I can maybe hear. Uh, so here's a, here's a comment and I wanted to add, for example, some trees because we're talking about trees. I've added the comment in. now I can come back and I can add the photos. Um, and I can also change the type of comment. Now, now that I've changed it, it is telling me that, uh, it is not my library. So I have a choice. I think these tree limbs being in contact with the roof should be in my library. So I am going to save it to my library. Now, the next time I go into the site section, I should be able to go in here and it should be in my saved site comments. So that's how you build your, your list. My reports, I don't use site. I use a variant of the uh, basic home inspection. So that's why it was not under the site section. Um, if you can't remember where I saved it, I could go into the exterior and I could just search for trees. And again, you can see all these tree limbs are here. Um, what is kind of cool, and we're gonna talk about a little bit of the, uh, let me get out of here. I'm gonna go into site and as I said, this may come in handy as you build your own personal saved comments. If I go into my site comments here and I don't have uh, a comment that I would like to have, say I've got something about negative grade, so I can search for grade. Um, and I think this one about the grading slopes towards the home, that's something that I may want to have in my site section. So if I add it here, and I don't have any photos of it, but I'm gonna save it to this report. I get prompted that the comments in my library, but do I wanna add it to my site? Um, and that means that it's gonna show up under the saved site comments. It shows up because it's in my library. That's why it showed up when I searched. But now it's asking me, do you wanna show have it show up in the saved site comments? And I do, I'm gonna have it added under this section. So then the next time I come in here, you can see that the grading there is now in my saved site comments. So that kind of, that comes in handy. Uh, you can manually modify and maintain your library. So if I want to get rid of this, I can 
either remove it from this section or I can delete the whole comment from my library. I don't really want to do either one. I wanted to make sure that you could see how you can modify these things. Um, so I'm just going to cancel that. That really comes in handy to maintain and to build your own library. So if you like to have the list under your saved comments, uh, make sure you save it in that section of your report. The view all report comments is very handy to be able to view all of your comments in one place and make changes. So I wanted to make sure that uh, you could see those two things as well. So getting back to the, uh, the, the webinar itself, the big stuff that I wanted to make sure that we covered today was your template, they list what is in every inspection. And that's important because your template is really pretty generic. It's gonna apply to any home inspection you do. Your comments describe what is in this inspection. So the comments are what your client is really gonna get the most value from, and it's gonna explain it in the best way. Also, a comment with a few photos is gonna be much, much easier to uh, read than a long checklist. And that's just human nature. When you plop down a 50, 75, or God forbid, 150 page document, nobody's gonna read it. It's just too much. So they're either gonna jump to the summary or they're gonna scan it. Just scan through and kind of flip through the thing. So if you've got a comment with just a couple of photos, that's digestible enough that an average homeowner is gonna look at it and read it. And that's what we want them to do. We need them to read the report. Um, your saved comments are gonna be the key to your speed and efficiency. I've got another webinar, we put it up on YouTube earlier today about using your web interface to manage your saved comments. So you can actually go on to tapinspect.com to manage them, but your saved comments, they're the key. They are the secret to getting quick and efficient to doing your reports. The longer your checklist, the more tapping you're gonna do. If you can add all the information in a comment with a couple of photos faster than doing a long checklist, you're gonna be quicker at doing your reports and you're also gonna be having an easier to read report. A good comment, you're gonna have three parts. What you see, why it's important and what to do next. It's really that simple. It does not need to be a textbook. You don't need to get into the explanations of how a 80% furnace works or what a TPV valve is. You need to say what you see, why it's important and what to do next. The water heater doesn't have a blow off leg. That can spray very hot water throughout the room, have it repaired by a plumber. Just keep it simple and you're gonna get through the report quicker. Avoid those big mistakes that we talked about with uh, managing your library. You wanna make sure that you save super, you don't wanna save super specific comments, you don't want compound comments, and you don't wanna save a bunch of variations of a same comment. It is kind of uh, difficult to wrap your head around the whole library. That's why I mentioned the idea of the web interface. Take a look at it when you get a chance. Take a look at that webinar. And we're going to be doing another one of those because I want to explain it a little better than I did in the, in the first place. And then when you're doing your reports, this is super important. When you're doing your reports, ask yourself, have I seen this before? Is it possible that it's in my comment library? And if you have to type it in, if you have to manually create that comment, ask yourself, could I possibly use this comment again? Is this too specific? Is this too many things in this comment? Or do I have something like this already in my, in my comment library? It takes a little bit of time at the beginning and you're gonna have to continually uh, work with your library, but it is gonna save you so much time and it's gonna be the secret of being super, super efficient with your, uh, with your report. So um, let's see if we uh, have any questions. Ask your questions, please. Uh, let me see what we have here. Do, 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 do. Why are certain comments on my iPhone but not on my iPad? They should be the exact same comments. Your comment library, Wayne, are uh, synchronized across your devices. The only difference could be if they all have the same ranking, your iPad is sorting them different than your iPhone. So 
if you've only used your comments once, we don't know how to order them. We just know that you've used them once. So you may want to go to the web interface, Wayne, to see because that's going to be the true single source of truth on your comment library. Um, but you should have the exact same comments on your iPhone and your iPad as long as long as you're logged into the same account. Um, yes, uh, John, I got your I got your comment. You'd love to see some of my reports. That is actually on my short to do list. I do want to get a couple of reports and kind of walk through them. I may even do a webinar uh, talking about how I put them together. I've been waiting for the weather to get a little bit better, and I want to do a video to kind of show how I go about doing a home inspection. I know a lot of new home inspectors have asked me that. I think a lot of people find it amazing that that I do get my inspection reports done on site, um, and it's not that complicated. So maybe I'm hoping if I do a, a video to kind of show you how I go about it and um, also go through a walkthrough of the report Hopefully that'll give you what uh, what you would like to see. Um, if there's rot in the bottom of the right front corner, so I guess uh, do, 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 do. so. John had a question about how do you balance uh, being general in the comment but being specific enough to tell them in the report? Well, photos do that really, John. They do a lot of it. Uh, if you take an establishing photo of the corner of a garage and put an arrow in the photo down at the corner, and then you do a close up down there, um, you should be able to put uh, a comment that says, uh, rot was visible on the trim of the garage. Now that is generic enough that you could probably change the location of where the rot was observed on any home inspection, but it's going to be uh, specific enough to use those photos. So you're right. It is a balancing act. I try to keep some super generic comments, but some I do make specific. And it's going to be up to your voice and, and how you practice the craft of home inspecting. I use comments to describe all of my bathrooms. Like I said, I use a, uh, a variant of the basic home inspection that I've customized and we modify it every year but I don't have bathroom sections. In the plumbing section, I have a comment for each bathroom. And it says, the hall bathroom fixtures operate as expected, except as otherwise noted. And then I take two, sometimes three, if I have to have three to fit all the fixtures in, of the shower running, the sink running with the doors open under the vanity and the lid off the toilet. So I actually do have a comment for the basement bath, the hall bath, the master bath, because I use those on every single report. So I do have very specific comments for those. Um, I good example is my master bath. I don't have anything about a Whirlpool tub. And then I add another comment for just the Whirlpool tub. So the ability to balance uh, specifics and being general is really going to determine um, by the voice that you have as a home inspector. And you can always change it. So it's pretty good. Um, Dale wants to know how to separate saved comments, good or bad. Dale, you need to go to the web interface because um, that is going to let you look at all the comments in your library at once. And I think you're going to be surprised by how many you have. Uh, we start everybody out with like uh, 1,700 generic ones. So we're kind of looking to see if we really want to do that from now on. But uh, uh, if you want, email us, and I'll send you a link to it. Go to YouTube, Dale, and there is a video that walks you through using the web interface to manage your comments. Katie and I have gone through a couple of inspectors' uh, save comments with them, and we've pared them down. One guy had like 3,000 comments, and I think we got it down to 700 or 400, and they were all a bunch of duplicates and stuff like that. So we can definitely help you do it, Dale. And the trick is going to be managing them on the web interface. Um, is there an advantage to add a comment to your template? I don't know. Dan Darby asked that question. It's a good, it's a good question, Dan. Um, I think in a lot of ways, a comment does a better job of, of sharing a disclaimer than sometimes the section headers do. 
I think that the downside of adding comments to your template is that you put so much verbiage in there, it gets the good stuff gets lost. So like everything else, there's got to be a balance. Um, I don't know if there is any comment that I would want to have in every single report I do, because I really do like to have my comments be specific to this particular home for this particular client on this particular day. Uh, then again, it may be beneficial for you to have a comment maybe in the general section or even in like the heating section to have it cleaned every year or something. I'll leave that up to you, but uh, you got to watch the balance because otherwise you get a bloated uh, report as soon as you start it off. Um, uh, furnace issues. Well, if you have a number of furnace issues, you really want to put them into your comment library um, instead of going to the uh, uh, template. And that way you can use them on a specific home. Um, remember, your template is just going to be your checklist. You do have a completely separate uh, saved comments library. And uh, check out the YouTube channel and, and we'll try to uh, send something out afterwards to show it to you. But uh, yeah, the web interface is is what you want to look at. Um, uh, so again, how you can go into your own library. In the app, Joseph, you can go into your own library by adding a comment. It's as simple as that. Add comment. And then if you search for it um, or if you use the uh, uh, saved comments button. And again, we've got a good video on that at YouTube. Uh, it kind of shows you how to search and use your comments. Uh, very good. Very good. Um, great questions, guys. Um, let me walk through here, make sure I got all of these other ones. Let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. Um, let's see. Any more? Let me check out over in the chat because I don't know if we had any chats over here. Um, if anybody wants some one-on-one -on -one walkthrough about what we're talking about here, please don't hesitate to ask. Drop us an email. Katie or I will be happy to jump on the phone with you. We could actually use this uh, webinar platform to do a screen share with you individually. It does not have to be a webinar. Uh, we can do a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with you too. Using your comments and Putting them into your reports and finding them in your library is such a huge part of what makes it possible to finish your reports on site. And there's really no one way to do it. I wanted to share with you some of the best practices that I've learned and uh, some of the things that we've learned by working with other home inspectors. So there is uh, there's no single way to do it, no single way to word it. But hopefully uh, we've given you some good information, some stuff to think about. Our goal is to give our clients a report that is informative enough that they can make a, a good choice and a good decision about buying a house. To be able to do that, they've got to be able to read the report. And sometimes we get so stuck in trying to put so much information in there to either cover our butts or because we've just been taught to do it, that it becomes overwhelming. And in, unless a client can actually read and understand the report, we really haven't done what they've paid us to do. So that's what we've tried to do with TAP Inspect is to make that possible for you to do too. So please, thank you all for coming this evening. Um, I think we've got through all of the uh, comments, um, questions. Um, any more, don't hesitate. Drop us an email, give us a call. We are always happy to help. Thank you so much and uh, hope to see you again on our next webinar.